If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. That's the show where you send me your questions and I make an attempt to answer them. If you'd like a question read on this show, please send it to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's your best chance of having your question answered on this show. Or you can leave a comment in the description below. I'll try and get it from there. Or hey, we even have a question from Twitter today. So uh, you can send it uh, that way as well. It's, I'm Frugal Filmmaker on Twitter. If you didn't see the video last week, it was a tip video on how to better improve your marks that your actors can hit or using something that's brightly colored, day glow orange in my case, uh, so that your actors have a better shot at hitting their marks. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. Okay, let's uh, jump right into the questions then. Our first question comes from uh, Graydon Cochran. He says, I have a question on budget audio. What is the best entry level, also frugal, shotgun mic for a videographer starting out? Well, shotgun mics can get really expensive. I have a, a pretty good one. Mine's a Sennheiser ME66 uh, shotgun mic, and it cost around $400 back in the day when I bought it. And it's lasted for over 10 years. It's a really excellent microphone, but not very frugal, I understand. So what I would recommend is they have these shotgun mics that have been, uh, they're imports, and I kind of see them all over the place. They're really, really inexpensive. They're $20 inexpensive. I've never used one myself, but I've heard various reports across the web say, saying that they are decent, uh, especially for the money. They're a, a bargain for the money. Um, so it comes with a bunch of accessories. And of course, the most important thing with a shotgun mic is placement. If you can get it as close as you can to the person speaking, you'll get better audio. Your, uh, this $20 mic will sound great if it's closer to someone's mouth compared to my $400 mic that's uh, five feet away. That's just the way it works. And so I recommend uh, trying this mic out. If, if that's all you've got, $20, I recommend getting one. I'm also gonna put a link below in the description to an excellent uh, microphone comparison, shotgun microphone comparison that I've always sent people to that compares about 10 different shotgun mics that are on the market, starting with, uh, probably I think the most inexpensive one there is $99 up to uh, the one I use and beyond in price. So check that out uh, in, the in the description below. Really good information. Uh, that's just a really excellent comparison. So hopefully, if you have more than $20, you can get yourself a better microphone. But if you don't, uh, then I recommend you start with this one. Our next question comes from Ron Miguel, who asks, uh, My name is Ron. I'm a big fan of your channel and a fellow uh, NEX 5N user. It's the Sony camera that I use. I was wondering if you've had problems with your camera overheating fairly quickly. I've done everything I could find online, but nothing seems to work. Do you have any solutions to this problem? Well, Ron, I haven't had uh, very many overheating issues, although I don't do extended takes with the camera either. I think I don't think I've ever run my camera in record mode for five to seven minutes, as you indicate here, which is when yours starts to overheat. However, the best advice I ever found about the overheating issue is to remove that sticker that's uh, in between the LCD flip-out screen and uh, the back of your camera. If you just take a knife blade and put it underneath, it doesn't even appear to be a sticker, it just seems to be the back of your camera. But if you peel it up, it'll come right off and there's a, like a grate underneath it, a vent that'll allow your camera's microprocessor and sensor to breathe easier. I've done that and I haven't experienced uh, very many issues that I may have had before, uh, but it, it seems to run cooler. So that, that's what I would recommend. Uh, there's some other advice I've seen on the web, putting heat sinks on it or even a fan. I think the maximum the camera can go without overheating is 30 minutes. I've never tried to run it that long, but taking the sticker off, I think is just a no brainer and it's really easy to do, it doesn't cost anything. So that's what I would recommend. If you've tried this already, I'm not sure what to tell you. If anybody else out there has a Sony NEX camera with this similar problem, please comment below. All right, we got some comments from last week's uh, Q&A uh, episode. Mike Hagan says, uh, speaking of six foot seven, my height that I mentioned, did Connie have to stand on a stool to get in the shot with you? And Connie Krishlow was the guest I had last week and uh, she looks fairly close to my height. And yes, she definitely had to stand on a stool. In fact, I'm going to show you a picture right now of what the shot looked like. Or my wife took a picture of us standing next to each other without a stool, and she was considerably shorter than me. I think she's actually a foot shorter than I am. Her, the bottom of her forehead was barely above the bottom of the frame. So yes, we had to put her on a stand. We we had a uh, I don't have any apple boxes here, but I had a folding uh, st uh, step stool, and that's what she stood on. I think it put her about nine inches off the ground, so that she was a little closer to my height, considering how tight this shot is. Uh, it's a close-up, and so we need to get her in the frame. That's what we use. In fact, everybody who's been on the show with me, it's been two people so far, they've all had to stand on something that come close to my height because I'm just freakishly tall. Uh, next up, another comment we had was from Blue the Fox, who says, here's an interesting writing story question. If you wanted to make a film about your own life story, 
How would you make it interesting while still staying true to real life events in the case of your real life not being particularly interesting? This is an interesting question, actually. I never thought about, you know, what it would take to make your own life story. I think probably the first thing I would do is have someone, not me, write the script. Uh, someone that was more of an impartial uh, party that would do the uh, screenplay. Uh, because they would be a much better judge, I think, of what is uh, interesting and what isn't. Of course, you could guide them, but I don't think I'd even want to be involved in trying to make my own life look interesting because I wouldn't. I would be completely subjective, of course, and not even know where to start. Now, this question has actually got quite a few responses. Uh, if you go back to the last Q&A video, you'll see a bunch of responses. I think there's 13 so far about this question. They have some has some good advice in there. Um, but if you're going to take this route, I'd definitely involve someone else. Now, this is essentially an adaptation. I mean, you'd be taking your memoir if you wrote one and having someone else adapt it into a movie. And I think it's really critical you have someone else do it because you're not going to be the best judge on what's going to be interesting and what isn't. So that would be the first step, I would think. Okay, next up we have our first question that I'm using from Twitter. And if you want to send me a question on Twitter, I'm Frugal Filmmaker on Twitter. Uh, so you can follow me. The link's below if you can't remember that. Uh, but this question from Twitter is from jbrooks12, and he says, Just saw your Q&A. Love the skin tone quality in your vid. What camera and lighting setup do you use? Thanks. Well, I have a real basic uh, setup here because I, have to, I don't have a studio, as you most of you know. So I set this up in my living room every Saturday or Sunday night when I shoot this. And it's a real simple setup. The camera I'm using is a Canon uh, Vixia HFS100. It's a camcorder I've had for four or five years now at least. It's just kind of an old workhorse that I use. It's an HD camcorder, a uh, nice camcorder, but uh, very simple. My key light over here is a simple floor lamp that I have with two uh, CFLs screwed into it. I'm not even sure what the wattage is on them, but I actually made a video about uh, floor lamp lighting in the past, and that's exactly what I'm using. I'll leave a link below uh, in the description as well as on the screen so you can see. It's just a floor lamp that we have in our living room, and I'm just positioning it to act as a key light. Um, I can't seem to get rid of this hot spot though right here. It always seems to show up. So, And then the uh, background, the uh, DVDs you see in the background here are lit by a fill light, which is my uh, Photo Deox LED light that I have over here on a light stand. And just again, that's it, real simple. That kind of acts as also sort of a rim light on this side of my face, sort of. It's more lighting and more pointed at the background here than it is at me. You can kind of see the uh, kind of st uh, strong side, weak side here and how my face is lit. Um, but that's it. It's two lights and then I have some lights on. Um, I have a ceiling fan light that's sort of behind the camera right here that acts as a little fill. And that's all. Um, I'm glad you like the skin tone of this video because sometimes, you know, I have to, I do the, the uh, colorist job on all these videos and I'm still learning how to do that. That's a real tricky area for me. And sometimes uh, I'm glad you like the skin tone on this video because other videos I've made, like the one I uploaded Saturday, I looked pink. So. That's all the questions we have this week. Again, if you'd like your question read on this show, please send it to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's the best chance you'll have of uh, getting it read on the show. And I'll try and answer it there as well. Sometimes I've been negligent. I apologize if I didn't respond to you personally through email, even though it may have appeared on the show. Uh, you can also comment below in the description. That's a good way to get my attention. And now Twitter, at uh, frugalfilmmaker is my Twitter handle. So please send questions to either one of those three places, and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, again, we're going to have a video hopefully this Thursday instead of Saturday and then another Q&A on Monday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.